Number 11, Phil Twyford. Order. Mr Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Local Government. Does he stand by his statement that, given how these councils have been run, I would be surprised if there wasn't some ability to make savings? Order. Before I call the Minister, order, I'm... <coughs> The noise on my right on this occasion on the government benches was so loud I could not hear Phil Twyford, so I'm going to invite Phil Twyford to repeat his question. Phil Twyford, question Thank you, number Mr. 11. Speaker. Does he stand by his statement that given how these councils have been run, I would be surprised if there wasn't some ability to make some savings? The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Speaker, uh, yes indeed. Uh, the present Auckland Council's combined operating budgets is $2,000 million. And I'm confident that the structure will ensure better value from rates and central government funding. By reducing duplication and delays in previously intractable problems such as transport issues, services such as administration, office systems, finance, human resources and information technology will be integrated and streamlined. Each council now operates its own systems so there are real savings to be made. Unified decision making, better transport and infrastructure, and more efficient delivery of services will all contribute to a great Auckland region where people want to live and do business. Can he confirm that under his third super city bill, six of the seven CCOs planned for Auckland will be required to pay tax on council activities that are currently non taxable? The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Uh, Mr. Speaker. We are still working through uh, the, ta the tax details, but I can say this. I can say this, Mr. Speaker. IRD officials have advised the Minister of Revenue and myself that there will be no increased tax exposure for the Auckland Council. Indeed, they advise that there will be less tax. For example. Point of order, Phil Twyford. Point of order, Mr Speaker. I asked the Minister, can he confirm that under his third super city bill, six of the seven CCOs will be liable for tax? And the answer so far doesn't address the question. Well, order. In fairness, I think the Minister in answer said that some of these decisions have not been finalised yet, but then went on to uh, advise the House about an IRD or IRD advice that, that uh, contains, I would have thought, quite helpful information for the member. I, had he been political, I would have stopped him, but it seemed he was being helpful to the House. But uh, if the member was seeking now the call to ask a supplementary question, I'll let him do that. Is Phil Twyford... Sup sup I think we've heard enough answer. Phil Twyford, supplementary question. Why did the Minister say that no decisions have been made? Why did the Minister say no decisions have been made on tax issues for the Auckland Council when his third bill clearly makes six of the seven CCOs tax liable? And isn't this just another example of his rushed and shoddy handling of the super city process? The Honourable Rodney Hyde. Mr Speaker. Oh, uh, au contraire, uh, Mr Speaker. Indeed, um, over $100 million of existing tax losses that are now stranded will be made available to the entire Auckland Council as a consequence of the, of the work that myself and the Minister of Revenue have done. I've been advised by officials that the tax savings to the entire Auckland region as a result of the restructuring is estimated to be about $10 million a year, Mr Speaker, ongoing. And if the New Zealand Herald told the truth, this would be their headline right here. Because there is going to be tax savings for the new Auckland Council as a consequence of the work that this government is doing. The Honourable Jim Anderson. Mr Speaker, as the Minister seems to be relying on tax losses to make up for the extra tax involved in these uh, council-owned companies, is the Minister aware that Christchurch City Council runs its council-owned organisations at a significant profit 
at a significant profit, and dividends of hundreds of millions of dollars are regularly made to offset rates charged in our city, and if so, is he seriously telling the House that he and the government are planning to run the new council-controlled organisations at a loss in order to prevent tax from being paid to the government? <laughs> what Honourable Rodney Hyde. Speaker. No, uh, Mr Speaker, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that tragically there's $100 million of losses already within the structures of Auckland councils that can't be realised and is lost, and that adds up to uh, savings of $10 million a year for ratepayers. That's real money that will be saved. And indeed, the advice that we've had from the IRD officials is that there will be savings in taxes of $10 million each and every year. And I repeat this, Mr Anderton, as a consequence of the restructuring. That's good news for Auckland. Phil Twyford. Isn't it true that even if we believe the Minister's promise to make the CCOs tax neutral, Aucklanders will still have to pay more under his plan in rates, water rates, GST on rates, and to top it off, $34 million in consultancy fees and executive salaries for the transition to a super city they don't even want? No, well, no Rodney Hyde. No, once again, that's not true. Quest. Supplementary, Mr. Phil Speaker. Twyford. How is it fair for Aucklanders to pay all these extra costs when they've been given no choice on the super city? His CCOs will lock them out of decision making on three quarters of council operations, and his local boards will have no powers to make bylaws. Honourable Rodney Hyde. The, well, I am thinking because I'm trying to work out how to explain in a simple way for the member that actually the restructuring saves on the tax liability of the Auckland Council of $10 million a year. And I would have thought that's extraordinarily fair. Point of order, Phil Twyford. Mr Speaker, my question was asking him about the fairness of Aucklanders paying the costs of the super city while having no input and no decision making on the outline and the shape of order. the super city. He I hasn't listened, answered that. I listened very carefully to the member's question because I feared that a point of order might be raised. The member made a series of statements in his supplementary question. A series of statements. Now, how the Minister responds to a series of statements contained in a supplementary question is really up to the Minister. If the member wants detailed answers, he has to ask precise questions. Some of his colleagues could give him some lessons on that. Uh, question number 12, David... Uh, no, no, order. I'm calling David Bennett. Question 12.